Boom, 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 boom. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is Lupe Fiasco. Um, and how, how can I say this? We about to eat. You know what I'm saying? One of my favorite uh, things to do as a human being, if you didn't know, was to put food into my body. And I have a preference for delicious food. And if I had to make a choice between, say, a delicious hamburger and maybe say some delicious Japanese food. I'm picking the delicious Japanese food 116% of the time. And pleasure and honor to have in the building with us today, uh, the good folks from Marugame Udon, right? And we're gonna have a great conversation about food, Japanese food, Udon, culture, the Olympics, all kinds of other crazy stuff. Um, I'm gonna let the homies introduce themselves here uh, uh, real quick. So if you brothers would please introduce yourselves to the good folks out here in uh, podcast land. Hello. Thank you for the uh, wonderful intro. My name's Alonzo. I lead the marketing for Maragami Udon. Hi. Hi. My name is Akinobu Matsuo. I mean, call me Aki. And yeah, I'm authentic Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> that is a real Japanese accent. <laughs> we call him Chef Aki. He is Chef uh, Aki. Yeah, yeah. He is Margami Udon superstar. Wow. Yeah. Wow. How long? How long have you been cooking uh, at Marugame? Marugame, eighty years, almost eighty years. Wait, Incredible. eighty eight? Did you say eighty years? No, eight. eight. Oh, eight. Okay, I was just saying. I was just making sure. <laughs> it's like, is that old? How, yeah. how old? How how old is is Marugame Udon? It's a, a little over twenty years old. A little over twenty years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the first time I actually seen it was, man, I want to, I almost want to say Hawaii, mm -hmm. um, uh, a few years ago, um. And I think the first time that I actually had it, well, actually, I'm, I may be, I may be like missing, skipping steps. Um, I had it here in LA, I think first, um, and over in, on the at the Salt Hill, over there in uh, mm -hmm. that, that 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 part of town, um, and it was super interesting because it was super active, mm -hmm. um, and like super like like what's going on? And anytime you see a place with a line and the whole situation, you're like, what what what, what is this spot? Um, and so I've always kind of been drawn to, you know, the activity of the place. Um, and then when I got in there and actually had a chance to eat um, and see how the food was served and the style of it, it was all, it was like pretty impressive. I was like, oh, it's pretty dope. I kind of been sleeping on Omarugame a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And I never was, I just recently, now this is true. Just re not everything that I just said was a lie, <laughs> but just recently got into Udon, right? And I, I think maybe one of the best places to start is... You know, what is udon? Yeah, udon is one of the Japanese noodle, and then uh, thicker than ramen or soba. It's like other noodle, Japanese noodle. Udon, and then also marugame udon's udon is like uh, bouncy, bouncy texture, good texture. Chewy and mochi, like very specific Japanese noodle. Mm. So, so there's several different types of udon. We serve a sanuki style. So sanuki, it's, okay. we call it ramen's big brother, and it's it's a like um, what he's talking about. The term is called koshi. So think of koshi as our our version our version of, of Japanese version of al dente. So it's oh, okay. bouncy. Okay. So so there's there's very soft udon. There's versions that are very soft. They cook it for a long time. Ours is a firmer, bouncier noodle. So the mm. texture is a, a very big differentiator between the different types of udon. Mm. Is the way that is that it's served in uh at Marogame, is it is that a traditional way that udon is is served? And like the style of it, like it just feels almost like a cafeteria 
almost mm-hmm. it isn't like it isn't like somebody brings something to your table and like you you go through a kind of a whole process and pick out your stuff is that kind of service like a traditional japanese thing or, or is that something specific to udon yeah that's like yeah sanuki sanuki udon style like the cafeteria style also, actually, the traditional making process is the walking, like use foot, foot and hand, like that. But the Marugame Udon instead use uh, machine and handmade. It's no, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, so, so they, they like wine, like they, they make it with like their feet? <laughs> and yeah, just, actually, so if I'm eating. If I'm eating udon in Japan, I'm eating somebody somebody put their foot in. <laughs> Probably, if you're eating if you're made, eating handmade udon in Japan, you're eating either eating at a maragami udon, mm. or yes, and and it's not common. Most people, I mean, the reason maragami udon is so popular in Japan is the process to make it yourself is really involved. But yes, there's like a a board they put on top of the dough and they walk on it. And, uh, and then they, they have a, a long, like a, a long knife, a long blade, and then they cut. So that's why the noodles square. So if you ever notice, and you can kind of see with your noodles now, it's a, it's squares. Cause it's, you know, it, they get a, a certain thickness and then they cut it. So it's got, a, mm. unlike a, you know, typical, like a Italian noodle that's round because they're cut, gives it that square shape. So they're not putting that actual feet into oh, the no, no. Oh, Okay, I was just making sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have, so, so Maragami Udon has um, uh, special machines that we use. So, so um, the chef will put the dough, it has a, it presses it down, it, it rolls it out, and then we have a machine that cuts it. But it's still... We were just talking about this. There's still lots of different nuances to making the noodle. Like um, you were talking about the boiling the noodles and how you have to change the temperature mm-hmm. and the time you boil based on the weather. Yeah. Oh, why? Why? We, we don't know. It's also like the the humor. Like temperature up, like very hot. It's gonna be soft. And then cold, it's gonna be heavy, like hot. Mm. Yeah. So, so y'all put humans into the udon dough. Yeah, that's right. What I'm coming out is a, a human touch. touch. <laughs> <laughs> so this is human being. What I'm yeah. eating right now. You yeah. The name. His name is Udon. Larry Udon. That's um, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like udon. It's very sensitive. Mm. Mm. Very sensitive. Yeah. yeah. Like baby. Hmm. So, I so I, I watch a lot of uh, sumo wrestling, right? Mm-hmm. That's why I got my Nishigawa hat on, West Side mm-hmm. all day. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> t- talking with y'all right now, it, it makes me feel like I'm watching like two, like I'm interviewing two sumo commentators, or we're having this, a discussion about something. And I just feel like saying like, "Oh, soul this and that, soul this and that, soul this and that." I'll come with me, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, sorry for the for the sidebar. Um, so you mentioned, you mentioned, um, Maragami has been around for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Has it been 20 years in the States or Mm -hmm. 20 years in Japan? Like explain to me, I guess, like, you know, how did, what, how, what is, what is Maragami? Where did it come from? Mm -hmm. How did it kind of start? It's kind of reputation in Japan. Cause I only know of it. Um, even though I've been to Japan, like multiple times and stuff like, and we'll, we'll get into that maybe later in the conversation. Yeah. I've been to Japan multiple times. I've I've never had maragami udon in Japan, you know? And it was the same thing like uh, some of your competitors, like we're not going to name them. They start with a Y. Um, <laughs> but like 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 Yoshinoya, right? Just right. to throw that out there, right? Right. Um, you know, for, for me, the first time I seen these brands was like in America, you know? Mm-hmm. And then you like, no, that's been in Japan for like, you know, 80 years, according to Chef here. But can you just give us kind of like the story of kind of like Marugame from the, or maybe from the Japanese side and how it kind of came to the States? Yeah. So, so it's, it's been in Japan, like we said, a little over 20 years and they have over a thousand locations there. We came here a little over three and a half years ago. The first location is, I think the one you mentioned in Waikiki. 
Uh, and so they opened that one first. And uh, just as a side note, what's interesting is that the the Waikiki location is called Marakame Udon with a K because the concern was the when Toradol, who, who, who started Marakame Udon, when they came to the States, they were worried that um, the the game, the G would make people think that we were selling games. So they were look they were concerned about the literal <laughs> So we have one restaurant called Marakame. <laughs> so ah. a little aside, it causes a little confusion. But that location, and this is just kind of a, a nod to what Japanese food is doing in the States. That location is the busiest in the entire company. Wow. Including Japan. It, it, I mean, it, it crushes wow. the number of people that go in and out of that place. And so with that one, they were like, oh, okay, we're on to something. You know what? Now that you mention that, I actually thought that, because it is Marukame in, in, in Hawaii, right? And it's, mm -hmm. it's Marukame here. And I, I thought they were two different restaurants, mm -hmm. right? I thought they may have been like competing kind of things, but it's the, it's the same thing. Wow, I didn't know mm -hmm. that. Um, interesting factoid right there. Very, um, yeah. <laughs> how is uh, you said there's a thousand stores in Japan? Yeah, yeah, almost a So we're in J we're in Japan, Indonesia, the United States, mm -hmm. and Korea, China, wow. Australia, and actually London opened this yeah. Monday. Yeah, we opened in the UK uh, Monday. Wow! Congratulations, congratulations. So it's pretty, it's pretty successful. Basically, is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good. Basically, you, basically you just you throwing that in my face. You throwing just your success in my face. You know what just I'm saying? Is that bit. what you're doing right now? Okay, all right, it's cool. Don't worry about it. You know what? It's fine. I, I got a surprise <laughs> for you a little later too. Since we talk about success, don't even worry. About it. I got you. Though. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> That's been the thing, I, and I I forget. Um, we were talking earlier, Lupe, about how we connected. I, I think we saw you say something about Maragami Udon. Maybe it mm. might have been that first visit. Mm. I so. definitely went in. I definitely went in there, and like I do at most places, that where the food looks amazing. I think I ordered like two of everything, right, including bowls of udon. So I was sitting there like I was yeah. Goku from Dragon Ball Z with just like mountains. Yeah. And food and stuff like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. and it, it really was one of my first if not my first kind of udon experience you know um okay. i've been i've had like crazy japanese sushi on all levels um i've had actually the first time that i ever had sushi was at the uh was at the airport in tokyo leaving right and i was like i might as well i was i was real kind of like like hesitant on getting really, really deep into kind of Japanese like food like that. And it, it actually took kind of a, a process of experiencing certain things, getting used to certain textures, getting used to like certain flavors and stuff like that. So the learning curve um, is something that took some time. Um, but I feel like, you know, if I wish I would have known that, you know, udon was, was, was such a, like kind of a universal meal and had like other aspects to it, like the tempura. And I want to talk about like the tempura aspect of it. Cause it's not, it's just, it's not just the noodles, but those, mm -hmm. it seems like I wish I would have got udon first. Cause it seems like the best entry way into Japanese food, right? Because it is so relative. And I think part of the success you mentioned, you got a thousand stores and kind of expanding a across the globe is because it's, it, you know, it, it's relative. It is pasta, you know, at, at, at one denominator. Right. And it is, mm -hmm fried chicken at another denominator when you get into the tempura side like that it, it doesn't it doesn't have like a, a big steep or uh, you know a very high kind of bar to get and get into but some people I'm, even to this day there's people i know that won't won't even touch sushi they're like i'm not i'm not touching yeah. it right and yeah. let alone if you you put them in front of something like a full 15 course kaiseki meal or something like that it's just super intimidating right like you don't even know how to eat it let alone so is two questions is udon you know, kind of like looked at like, looked at like that in Japan. Is it like just kind of like a basic kind of meal for folks meant to not be too sophisticated, et cetera? And then secondly, where does the tempura come in? Has the tempura always been there? Is that like how does that how does that work? Hmm. 
That's a good question. The real one I, needs... I know, Chef. I got good questions all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real one is like a hamburger in America. Like very the normal meal in Japan. It's like that. Mm. It's good. They eat more udon is the number one noodle. They eat more udon, more udon noodles than any other noodle in Japan. Yeah. Wow. They eat it for what? breakfast there too. Yeah, breakfast, yeah. lunch, dinner. Yeah. Wow. So just kind of like, mm -hmm. all, is is it, is it like traditionally a breakfast food, or is it, or is it like just all like all day, like just have at it? Yeah, all day. It's not breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Japanese can eat breakfast, lunch, dinner all all day, all the time. Wow. It's, it's like pretty Japanese comfort food, right, Chef? Yeah. Exactly. Hmm. Hmm. So if if is it is it more popular than like curry or like sushi? Yeah, sushi, curry rice, or like ramen. It's special food. Mm. The udon is like rice, white rice, and udon mm. is the same. It's normal meal. Mm -hmm. It's regular meal. So if you go eat sushi, that's a special meal. That's special. The udon you eat like yeah. with everything. Eat every day, every. Right, you eat udon. You eat udon on the bus, basically. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we so we have, um, you know, we have partners in Japan, and you know, you you touched on this a little bit, but you know, this type of food is it, it's seen differently here than in Japan, right? It's it's more it's a little more special for a lot of our Japanese guests. It's it's a nice connection to home, so we have a lot of. A lot of uh, Asian guests, obviously, and then you know, for you know, a broader audience, it's just this kind of special experience. So we really sell on the experience that you couldn't do in Japan because they're they're like, well, you know, it's like if we tried to sell an experience around hot dogs here, <laughs> nobody would be all that excited. But here, it's you know about like you said, the 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 environment and the restaurant and you know the way it's made. All of those things are are more relevant here. I want I want folks to get a look at what we're talking about because we've, we've been talking about the udon. I want to start the show, and before we get into like the tempura question, right? I want people to see like what this actually kind of looks like. That hold on, what am I doing? Is that? Can you see it? Can you see my? Oh, you got going? yours all dressed up already. I need to. Put yeah, my... you know, I had to. It had to put the tuxedo on. You know what I'm saying? I call I like that it. putting on the tuxedo. <laughs> yeah, that is nice. You are like pro. Uh, Damn. All right, let me put. So, so what did you put on yours, Lupe? I put uh, okay. So, so as we go through this, mm -hmm. first, first talk about what the where did the tempura come into the equation? Because oh, yeah. it's not just the udon, right? And then we'll get into how we dress this up. Yeah, the tempura udon is good combination. Mm. Yeah. So, wow. because the texture or the taste or taste and yeah, soup and kind of soaking. Tempura soaking udon soup like that. Mm. It's like traditional eating style. You know. Has it always been that way, chef? Always eating tempura with udon? Not always, but yeah, like sanuki style is basically udon and tempura is set. Mm. And like mm. rice bowl or something. Yeah. yeah, it's not common in at least in Japan the way I understand it is it's not common to have udon without tempura. Mm. It, it, they really do the combo of the soaking up the, the soup with the, the tempura as part of the kind of fun of it all. It's also a way to get a protein, right? So, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so, yeah, yeah. you know, but the tempura, the, the most popular tempura that we sell is the shrimp. So, um, you, and it, so it just adds a little element to it. I think that makes it a little bit more flavorful. Yeah, it it was the most popular until today. So people see what how I did mine. Then mine right. will be the most popular. Just FYI, yeah, chef. But but so <laughs> so so walk walk me through the toppings, and I guess maybe we we'll, we we can maybe explain because it's it's not like you just get some noodles and put them in a bowl, right? And you're done. I mean, you could do that, right? You could just have the broth and the noodle and that's it. But there's all these extra aspects that get thrown on top. So I have on mine right now, uh, green onion, as you can see, mm -hmm. 
I got some uh there's this pepper. What is this this red kind of like pepper yeah. powder thing? This is shichimi pepper. It's yeah. traditional Japanese spicy powder. It's kind of combining seven ingredients into the powder. It's mixing. Okay. And the good flavor I... with like fish base and udon soups. Mm -hmm. All right, I got some uh, ginger. I think some crushed ginger kind of chilling over there. Like I think the hold up. I'm, if I spill this in my computer, <laughs> I, I listen. Just letting y'all know, I'm trying to I'm trying to navigate. Hold on, let me get my thumb out the way. Right there is the uh, the ginger. Uh -huh. Right there, that's ginger, right? Yes. Okay. Just yeah. Making sure it's ginger. And then it, you can see like a little some crispy. That's tempura flakes, right? Like kind of tempura flakes. Yep. Like he was talking, putting the tempura in there to soak up some of the uh, the delicious juice. This right here, uh, what is this? Is this uh, what am I eating? Aburagi. Like, what is this? Aburagi. Aburagi. It's a it's a sweet fried tofu. Ah, so I got some tofu right here, mm -hmm. and then underneath all of that, the ceiling of deliciousness, as I like to call it, That's right. right, is a a pool of delicious. Uh, udon noodle for people to see how for people who know what like ramen like this is like four ramen noodles tied together basically right that's <laughs> maybe pretty five. good yeah chopstick skills pulling one noodle out right that i'm saying let, i could really <laughs> pick up, i could pick up one particle of liquid just so you know I could, I could dig in here and pick up an atom you of liquid drink and soup and balance it <laughs> with my mind uh, yeah. just so you know i could i could absorb this with my brain right so listen <laughs> um and then you got this broth and this is uh and then i got this beautiful bowl too man yeah this bowl is amazing yeah um but but what is the broth made out of what what's in this delicious soup man before yeah. i dig into it i'm gonna I'm eat while you talk because i'm hungry now it's been here yeah. it's been sitting off to the side okay. I'm, I'm gonna get me in here okay so the this soup is based on fish base from the katsu, katsu fish and iriko fish. It's like a lot of the kind of fish and from the kombu, what do you call it? Shiwi? Mm -hmm. Shiwi, the flavor. It's based on soup and mix like soy base, like special, yeah. special kaishi, I mean special soup together. And it's gonna be good, like kake udon, like bk udon. It's other soups to make. Right. That traditional dashi sauce or, or soup, um, it it does have a fish base, but it's not a. You see, it's not a super fishy flavor because no, it's, it's not. The idea is that you blend it with the seaweed and the soy, these different flavors to give it that nice kind of mild flavor in there. So it's a perfect base for whatever you add to it. That's why I was so, I mean, seeing that you added all that to it, you know, that's that's kind of the game. You, you go in, they're making these noodles every 17 minutes. And so you're getting super fresh udon. And then the fun is adding the things into it. You know, all of these mm. toppings you talked about, the different types of tempura. So that that's really what makes it and so that base it's important that it has flavor but it doesn't take away from the rest of the dish mm. are these are these toppings uh kind of traditional to japan like is this kind of setup of the green onion the ginger the tempura flake at least as that kind of basic is that like just like our ketchup and mustard and type situation uh, yeah, actually the same, the green onion and tempura flakes and ginger and shichimi, like spicy powder. It's like Japanese style. It's not ketchup, mm. mayonnaise, and mustard, it's American style. <laughs> <laughs> but, if, but if I wanted to, I could put corn flakes and ketchup in here and yeah. some ice cream and I could just go nuts. For your breakfast. Yeah. No, I mean, in this right now, I could go crazy right now if I wanted to. Oh, yeah. Or is, or is that, is that like, is there, I guess, is there like a taboo? Like if, like if, if I walked into Debu? like a taboo. Anything, no, no, no. Anything like a, you can't put in udon? Is there something you, you, you can't put, put in udon? 
Yeah. Like if I went to Marugame Udon in Japan and I, I put in something and I would get like deported from Japan because I, I did the mm. sin of putting an ingredient that's never supposed to be in Udon. Because mm. uh, of everything. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So when I when I, I when I put yeah. cheese. When I put cheese in my udon, I don't cheese. want y'all complaining, okay? I think that would be good. Like, and not even, like, just squares of Velveeta. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, they, they use, um, they use spam a lot, too. Um, so not necessarily an udon, but you can, you know, we get, we, we have masubi, which is, uh, we have a spam masubi that, that spam served on rice, just wrapped in seaweed. So mm. that's good on the side too. So you can kind of get pretty weird with it. And kind of over here in the cut is my tempura right here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. How many different kinds of tempura do y'all have at the at the shop? Ten, ten items. Mm -hmm. My favorite is the big chicken. Big chicken, oh, the big chicken, yeah. big chicken katsu. Oh my god, that is. That is divine, and the sweet potato. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah, it's really. So uh, interview, yeah. interview's over. I'm gonna just eat this bowl as much as no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Chef Aki in his in his day could finish twelve bowls in one sitting. Twelve bowls of udon, like an eating contest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, we have ridiculous. we have people challenge him, try to eat more than he does. Right, it's yes. absolutely ridiculous. He said, "Hot dog, hamburger in America." So yeah, Japanese eat udon easier. Yeah, so instead of Nathan's, we should do like a margami udon mm -hmm. udon eating contest. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> Sign me up. I'll definitely do it. I'll listen, Chef. Right. I'm gonna beat you, just so you know. Oh, Lupe, I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying I that you said that. I I don't care what it. <laughs> I don't care what it takes. I don't care what I have to do to my body. I'm gonna beat you, Chef. You see these eyes? They on, they on you. It might be a good new Olympic sport. I'm surprised they didn't try and introduce that with Tokyo. Ooh, so listen, good segue. And since you since you mentioned it, right? And we I, I mentioned earlier you, you mentioned earlier that y'all have a thousand restaurants and are full of success. I am also full of Olympic su success. Okay? okay, I am no slacker when it comes to the Olympics, so I came prepared, you know. Okay, but for, for 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 you all right now, so two seconds. Let me go on over here and grab. Oh yeah, I'll let you know that you know when it comes to the Olympics. I am also no slouch, just so you know. Okay. Amazing. He's on. You know. How much time did you spend there? Well, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, when you're, wow. you know, I, I don't want to brag, but you know, I'll just let the gold medals speak for themselves. You know, let me talk about success. I just want to let you know. Okay. You have many talents. Don't, don't, don't worry about this. I think this one is in like. Uh, for swimming or something, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you won so many, you forgot what you won them forgot. for. I, yeah, I, I forgot. We were just yeah, talking we were about um, <laughs> what's that? The thirteen-year-old that just won the gold medal for skate for skate skating. skateboarding. Yeah, yeah, from Brazil. Yeah, it was insane. No, um, there was a Japanese girl too. Yeah, Japan, I think it was two Japanese girls and, and one Brazilian girl, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it is that? Um, okay. I think so. Yeah. Um, and then the uh the winner of actually the Japanese on the men on the men's side for skateboarding was actually Japanese as well. It was a Japanese and American and a uh um I think the other guy may have been Brazilian too, if I'm not mistaken. That's yeah, incredible. So Japan I didn't, I didn't clean, know medals, yeah. that was a big sport in Japan. I don't think so. Actually, I can't do skateboard. <laughs> he can't skateboard. He can't skateboard yet. That's what you're supposed to say, yeah, Chef. Yeah. You can't skateboard okay, yet. <laughs> yeah. Pretty soon, he'll be skateboarding and making udon at the same time. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be a disaster. It'll be the last, <laughs> the last day. Like, what happened to Chef? <laughs> oh, we know, we know what happened to Chef. Um, we wouldn't let him skateboard. He's too valuable. Uh, he's the only one that can fix the equipment in the restaurants. 
with this Japanese equipment. If he, <laughs> so if it breaks, he's the only one. Nobody can read the instructions. Is that what it is? Nobody can read how the machine works. No. <laughs> I, I, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you earlier. Could you, could you give us the secret recipe um, to the dashi broth? Like, mm -hmm. can you just give it to us right now? Like the exact ingredients and measurements. So I can make so I can make my own and set up my own restaurant and compete. Tell them in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> we have Google Translate, just FYI. <laughs> um but but no, like like but seriously though, the the you know, one of the one of the reasons that we decided to kind of come together at, at this particular time, um, you know, I'm a, a huge fan of the brand. Um and I appreciate you all for uh for being a fan of me as well and 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 giving me the opportunity to kind of collaborate. Um, but I think the the optimal moment was because it is the Olympics, you know, it's the 2020, uh, 2020 Olympics and, um, you know, what, what, everything that comes into that, we'll, we'll leave the politics and everything out of it. But Olympics are normally, you know, the host countries try to showcase or the host cities, you know, yeah. um, showcase their kind of cultural, um, products and, and things like that. And it, it, amazing opening ceremonies and a lot of kind of cross-cultural, conversation and exchanging of, of goods and ideas and stuff like that and so this was no different just so the, the fans and the folks out there in podcast land know um that was part of it like using this opportunity to uh showcase um you know different cultural products that come out of you know one of my favorite places in the world low-key people know like japan is my what like my favorite place in the whole world you know um grew up doing the martial arts um and actually uh i was planning on going to the olympics originally again you know what i'm saying did i say well, <laughs> again, going again but but this time this time not as a competitor you know what i'm saying this right. time is just right. some a spectator because clearly you know right. clearly right um but no wanted to go to actually see the uh uh karate competition mm -hmm. you know so i grew up doing japanese karate um in iaido and 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 judo and and aikido and, and and different type of japanese martial arts i actually knew how to count to 10 in Japanese before I knew how to count to 10 in English um, because it was just part of our career. We're going to karate school every day. You know, my dad had a martial arts school in Chicago. So I've always been immersed in kind of Japanese culture, but more so from the martial arts side, you know, mm -hmm. not from like the culinary side. Um, I actually thought that everybody at one point when I was like 14, even, even thinking about, you know, cross-cultural and, and misunderstandings and miscommunications and projections and stuff like that. I, I literally thought everybody was walking around in Japan, how we walked around in like karate uniforms and, and kendo gis and hakamas and stuff like that. Um, that that was just the image that was in my mind from doing martial arts for so long. Um, and then getting into anime and different things like that um, and video games, but all because of the martial arts, you know? So, so mm -hmm. I wanted to go to the Olympics to actually see the uh, karate competitions and the kata competitions, um, see Ryo Kiyuna, um, amazing martial artist from Okinawa, um, who's, I think, I think he's world number one in kata, you know, so I did kata coming up, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, he was going for the gold. So though that actually, I think the kata competitions are next week. So I'll be watching, I'll be watching those. Um, what is, but, kata? yeah, man, kata is, uh, uh, the forms. Okay. You know? So like, uh, the set forms that you would do. Right. So like, kick three times this way, block this way, punch this way without an opponent. Um, but they also have kumite and kumite is when you fight another person, you know, and it's complete, two completely different things, you know? Um, but yeah, kata is almost like a watching, like a floor exercise in gymnastics, mm -hmm. you know, but without all the flips and things like that, it's more specific techniques and stuff. Um, and I think karate has been in the Olympics for a little while, but yeah, but that was, that, that was kind of my, like my, my piece. And just hoping to kind of just be, you know, in and around the energy of that. Uh, and a lot of us were planning on going to Tokyo just to even just be in the space, even though we knew it was going to be like madness. But, uh, you know, COVID kind of, as we see, kind of shut everything down and, mm -hmm. you know, still doing the Olympics, but at a very low rate. Um, but yeah, so for me, I've always been immersed in Japanese culture, man. Always been in it deeply. I want to get a house there. Like I'm one of those guys where it's like, man, I want to get a house somewhere and live in the mountains and practice karate and meditate and eat udon and, you know, you know, catch fish and do all type of crazy stuff. So I'm weird like that. So I just want to, again, reiterate to the folks out there, you know, one of the reasons that we, that we did this was to, you know, use this opportunity to introduce folks 
um, to different aspects of Japanese culture. And today is like some delicious ass, you know, soup and noodles. Food is the, is the, is the best doorway. I feel like <laughs> cultures, you know, the, the, that, that's, I mean, Japanese culture is like exploding across the U S and I, I think mm. martial arts is one of those doorways. I think a lot of people are at least somewhat familiar with that connection. Um, but I've seen it, anime games, you know, um, it's, it's growing in food. Even sushi is, you know, a lot more popular. So it's the fastest growing food in America, fastest growing mm. segment. So there's this real kind of, you know, em embracing that culture. And I think food overall is changing, which is great in the States, you know, we're getting different types. I mean, before I started working with Maragami Udon, I was definitely, a, I mean, all of my knowledge of Japan was super cliche, like kind of mm. what you mentioned, <laughs> you know, I grew up with, you know, some, you know, Kung Fu theater on Sundays and that kind of stuff. So that was my, you know, I had a very small knowledge base, but it's amazing how, you know, how much Japanese culture has infiltrated and, and, and grown in this country. You don't even write, I mean, fashion, I see it all the time now. And, and, and music and J-pop and all of that stuff is starting to grow too. And, so, and, and the other way, your Kick Push was playing um, during the skate competitions. Yeah, I mean, let, uh... that's what I thought those were. <laughs> no, let me, let me. Those are <laughs> Let me take these off, man. They're making a little, I actually, just so folks know, I actually, um, I went on, I got these on, I think maybe a couple on eBay and a couple on Amazon. They did like some replica medals of oh. different Olympic games. Yeah. So if you're interested in, in, in being a fraud like me, um, and, and show and trying to get people to think that you won Olympic gold medals, you know, why not, you know, go to, go to Amazon, eBay. And pick I was up worried you were saying that uh, Olympians uh, were selling their medals on. Oh, eBay. no, 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 no. Uh, that, that is, that is the thing though. That is the thing. There are folks who you might go into a pawn shop and see like a, you know, a Super Bowl ring or something in there that maybe they lost it at a, in a bet or something, but it, you stuff kind of comes up from time to time. Hmm. Um, I, I was going to kind of like keep on that point about culture mm -hmm. and kind of like Japanese culture specifically. Uh, and, and bring it back a little bit to, to kind of the udon. When you look at something like sushi and you look at like kind of traditional Japanese sushi and then you think of things like the California roll, right? Mm -hmm. Which actually kind of, if, if I'm not mistaken, kind of got imported back into Japan, you know, as like a thing versus like that was a product of Japan. That was like mm -hmm. something that people took sushi and started to kind of go with it. Um, from doing the martial arts and, and being in that world, you know, Japanese culture is very strict in terms of sticking to, uh, we call it kihon, which are like the basics, but sticking in the martial arts, but it's sticking to a very set thing of definitions and steps. And you, you, there's no room for imagination. There's no room to kind of step out. It has to be this way. It has to be that way. And even when it gets exported to other countries, um, it's still kind of frowned upon to, to try and go off into your own kind of piece they'll it, it's not like they won't let you do it they just it's just it won't be a part of this particular system anymore you know um and you'll see like japanese you 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 rarely see e even with anime right so animes will come to the states and the only reason it's in english is because the american company who bought the license they actually do the dubbing and, and overdubs and they may even change certain parts of the script change the story to kind of make it a little bit more american and and, and, and fitting to the audience so i was going to ask um you no know, does is there anything on Mar marogame's udon menu that was like you know what we need to kind of cater to the american palette or we need to cater to kind of like the western palette or is it just like nope Nope, no, not changing anything. I don't care where we put a restaurant. We're not going to make a special version of udon for this people or that people. It's just mm -hmm. this is what it is. Yeah, it's 50%, 50-50. It's like pound is okay, but the more detail, it's gram. It's gram or kilogram, like more detail. But pound ounce is like more uh, bigger amount, right? So that it depends on the 
uh, cooking items. But chef, the menu in Japan, mm -hmm. the maragami udon menu in Japan, mm -hmm. is it identical to the menu that we have here? It's exactly the same in our shops, or do we have udon here that we don't sell in Japan? Yeah, it, a little bit adjust American taste, American like American people skill, like fifty fifty. Oh. Like a little bit localized to American style. It, it's like, um, yeah, you say like pounds, gram, it's, it's like that. Also, um, word, it's, Yashimasa is Japanese, only greeting, but some, the other word is English. It's like that. Also, the, Marugame item is like the Japanese likes um, simple udon. It's kake udon, buru kake udon. It's like simple base a lot. But American likes udon plus like protein or veggie mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. That the American menu uh, a lot of like nikutama, kari nikutama. It's like protein. It's on the top. But Japan maragame is more simple, only soups and udon. Like, mm -hmm. like yeah, the most popular udon in Japan is just the kake, which is just the basic. Here it's nikatama, curry nikatama, and tonkatsu. Those are some of the top, and those have, you know, the tonkatsu's got pork, and, you know, nikatama's got the egg, the beef, all of the stuff. So, um, in Japan, the way it was explained, and I think this is what you were saying, is that they they have a real appreciation for kind of simple perfection, that type of thing, not getting too complicated, which I think, you know, part of that is what you were talking about, just kind of everything being done in a certain way. This, this is kind of significant. So Chef Aki is uh, a menchokinin, so a master noodle maker. And... Um, Right now, he's training um, other Minshokinin, and they're going, he's training them here. They're going to Japan, and for the first time ever, they're going to choose a non Japanese Minshokinin. Oh, wow. It's a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long, does it, how long does it take to become a noodle master? Like, how long did you have to study? Uh, I ran, I, yeah, I was studying about udon maybe two years or three years, and then passed and took uh, udon master program, and then yeah, two two years passed, three years passed. Mm -hmm. Yes, and there's levels. There's like the so he's a level two master. There's one other level above that, and so they have. He was saying he has to learn a little bit more about udon, which is amazing to me because I don't know anybody that knows more about udon than he does. And so then the, his trainer was Mr. Fujimoto, mm -hmm. who's a mincho. Yes. And call him a mincho. So he's the top, top. And he'll decide who is the minshokinin that comes to the U.S. Wow. He knows. Yeah, he already knows. He's already yeah. chosen. Yeah, he told me on the online and then how should I do it? You, you should teach something. You should teach something. It's like guide, guide to me. So he's telling you, yeah. hey, this is what you need to teach them. So yeah. you're going back. Just so y'all know, you might not know, but surprise, it, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> the big, the big yeah. unveil. <laughs> he, called, he, he called me last night and he was like, Lupe, guess what? I was like, yeah, I already know. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, no, but <laughs> um, when you, when you be is the goal of kind of becoming a noodle master to maintain the traditions or to get give you such insight and understanding of the process and the noodles that you'll take it to somewhere else that you'll do something new with it. Yeah, he's everything. Mm. Like main, maintenance to like noodle master and inside program and mm. everything he maintained. 
Jeez. But it's but they don't change. It's the same. But but the, mm. the minchokinine is responsible for um for not just the standard around the noodles, but the hospitality that comes oh, from the restaurant. Like it, they, it, they build it. the culture in the restaurant. So they're really the leaders in terms of so so Chef Aki trains all of our restaurant teams. And so while he's teaching them how to make the noodles, he's also helping them understand the, the spirit of um of the you know Japanese food culture and and how to serve the guests and how to take care of the guests. It's a it's a big it's a really big honor and and he was saying also the maintenance of the machine. So Lupe, we we really need you. <laughs> <laughs> you need, you need me to crawl inside the machine? Is that what it is? You need to get in there and risk my life? Is that what it is? Yeah. Rub me down in oil so I slide through the, the noodle pipes and stuff like that? Is that, <laughs> is that what we're talking about? <laughs> yeah, you, you as a as a minshokini, um, you would be in charge of uh, omotenashi, which is the, the omotenashi. Japanese hospitality. So, and, and I think the literal meaning is 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 it's something like forward facing. It's basically very honest, very forthcoming. So that speaks to the way we make the noodles in front of the guests, all the food, you know, it's an ex exhibition style theater. So you see how your food is being made. And that's all part mm. of the Nashi. Back to this kind of cultural exchange, right? Um, do you think that, that Americans or Westerners kind of appreciate more, you know, the, the Marugame Udon process um, because they see it, there's a certain hospitality, like you said, there's a certain kind of grace in the way things are presented and made. Do you think that there's some, you know, transfer of that, that kind of Japanese aesthetic, you, you kind of get what I'm getting at. Like you go to McDonald's and it's, 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 it's kind of not like that. You go to another kind of fast food place. It's, it's not like that. It, it's, it's a different. And when you go to Marugame, it's almost like, you know, you know, there's a certain level of respect that you got to come into the restaurant with. Do you, do you, do you think that happens or am I just being too imaginative right now? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's good point. Like the American culture is like strong yourself, like personal, but Japan, Japanese mind is like teamwork or always think as a person, not me. It's like omotenashi mm mine. -hmm. So that the Marugame operation is also like if if I serve the guest udon is like not one hand, but it's like uh, both hand to serve. It's like uh, think about other person or guest. It's like Japanese mine. So that I mean I always teach, uh, teach crews, our crews think about guests, think about other person, think, think about, um, other crews like team. I always teach, teach. Yeah. Like With the training, I, I think one of the things that, that our teams are come to appreciate kind of to your point is, you know, that idea that. We're not about the individual in the restaurants and, and as a culture in Japan, you know, they, they appreciate the team. And so when we're training in the restaurant, we, that's a part of how we, we train folks is to help them understand. It's not about the individual. It's not about performing above. It's, it's about performing as a team. And I think for our guests, our, our non-Asian guests, there is a natural curiosity. And, and I think it is it's fun, you know, part of what we do, you know, from a marketing standpoint to, to stay kind of authentic and not play up any cliches is really present the process and, and people love it because you're right. You don't see that in typical fast food restaurants. And, and so being able to come see how the noodles are made, people are blown away. Mm. So yeah, at my restaurant, um, you, yeah. I, I would, I would, I would teach them how to fight the customers is what I would do. I would teach them. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the word for fighting? What do you... <laughs> a kumite. It would be a kumite, kumite. Based kumite restaurant, <laughs> uh, a fight to the death just to eat type situation, you know, um, completely turn on his head. No, but man, I, 
I, I, I, I say that to say, you know, it's, it's those little details and little things when you, when you think about cultures and um, people coming into different cultures um, outside of it just being the food, it's the whole like experience, you know, and I, I really like appreciate that about like my God. That's why I said, like, I appreciated the experience before I even had the food, before I even kind of stepped into the, the situation. I was like, yo, this is pretty dope. Like this feels really good. Um, so, you know, kudos on, on that to you, to you both for, for maintaining that type of, um, feel is it, super good to have in addition to, to the food being really good as well. So I'm, I'm going to flip it back and end it on, on a, kind of a few fun notes. Uh, chef, what is your favorite American dish? I like hamburger. In and out. <laughs> Shake shout. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah. Have you, have you ever had soul food? Mac and cheese, cornbread, mm. collard greens. Mm. Yeah. Candy yams. You tried that? Yeah, what do you I think about that? Food, actually. Yeah. I like Japanese food, but at the same as American food. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I'm just making sure because we got to get you. I'm going to get my mama. My mama's a chef. My and mama. One day, she, yeah, I'm, <laughs> one day, I'm going to get you to try my mama's soul food because I'm going to need you to put your stamp on it, stamp of approval. Great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do you like about America? You know, you're, you're, you're from Japan. Uh, what, do you, what do you like about America? I like America very much. Like, um, yeah, I'm, I like American person, very friendly, with very kindness. It's, yeah, sometimes not kind, <laughs> but <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Thinking, yeah, like, sometimes we can be real jerks. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, some person. But yeah, very wide. It's food. It's very good. Yeah, culture. It's a lot of people mix. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, I like America. Nice. And lastly, can you please teach me? Mm -hmm. Can I become your your student in my journey to master Udon so I can become one day I want to become the men show. So wow. can you please teach me? Sure, of course. For free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. You heard it here, folks. I'm going to <laughs> Chef, we could give we could give since he's already so far advanced, we could give Lupe uh, a, a a a crash course in Minchokini. Crash course. Yeah. A one day lesson mm -hmm. in making noodles. Of course. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to be mopping the floor and like cleaning the machine. Like I don't want all, I just want, <laughs> I just want the glorious job. I just want the, I just want the noodles. Like I don't want to, don't, don't have me cleaning the bathroom and open, right, right. you know, serving customers. Yeah. I just want to be back there getting filthy, making the noodles. We'll get um, the noodles and the Velveeta cheese and we'll be ready to go. Nice. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh I guess one, one last, what, this is, dude, I got many questions, but is the, is, is the person who's in charge of making the tempura like where is where is it like in in terms of like the uh the hierarchy like do you do you have to go through like tempura making first and then you're allowed to be noodles or is like is is like once you master noodles then they'll trust you with tempura like how does that how does that does is does it doesn't matter or hmm. yeah it's like yeah udon is main main food in Marugame. So that main shokunin, the, yeah, Marugame had main shokunin program. It's not tempura program. But I, the in charge, the person in charge has uh, tempura responsibility is me. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, making the noodles is a lot harder than tempura. Than tempura, okay. I mean, it, it, when you watch him, and we have a video on the site, but when you watch him, it's like when you watch experts do anything, you're like, yeah, it's easy. You should see when people are trying to do it the first time, it's a mess. There's noodles everywhere. Because you got to, like, as the noodles are coming out of the machine, you're, you're just taking this stick to grab the noodles, and then you have to place them in the water. I mean, it's... It's a real skill. So I would say if there was a hierarchy, I don't think we like the, the Udon makers don't pick on the tempura makers in the restaurant. They, 
<laughs> but but I think if if you want to learn how to make udon, it's you gotta. It's a, it's a they, lot of time they, work. But they should meet, right? Like that's an explosive combination because oil and water don't mix, right? So if they actually yeah. got into a fight, it would be a disaster, right? It would, yeah. That yeah, would gotta kind of keep. That might be something for our next training session in the in the in the restaurants. Okay. The tempura people versus the udon people. Mm-hmm. Udon people. A little healthy competition. Yeah, I don't know how healthy that competition is going to be. It's, it's definitely going to be delicious. Um, yeah. No, but I, I, I will say I will. Can you let folks know? Because um, this is this is another thing about Mar about Maragame about Maragame. Apologize. Um, you know where are they? Mm-hmm. You know to to let folks know. Um, we're talking to a bunch of people from all over the world. So if you can kind of let people know where this where they can get it in the states. That would be fantastic. We're in Dallas. So we have one in Dallas, and then we have one in those the little of suburb of Dallas called Carrollton, which is a big deal because that those are those are the first restaurants we opened that's outside of kind of a heavy Asian concentration. So it's the first time we're kind of broadening that um that base. Um those are two newest restaurants too. And then we have Two in San Francisco, Berkeley, and then and then one over by um, San Francisco State, and then we have Sawtell, which is in Japantown, over by UCLA. Uh, we're in South Coast Plaza here in Orange County. Um, we have one in downtown that hasn't opened back up again, but it will soon. And then we've got two in Waikiki. One's in uh, downtown Honolulu, and then there's the main Waikiki location. And then we've got a couple more coming this year. I can't tell you where they're coming yet. But you can tell me. You can tell us. Just between us, it's gonna. Yeah, be, just between just just tell us right now. It's gonna be. <laughs> we're gonna be in San Ramon, and we're gonna be in Houston. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, yeah. And they, they they're gonna build one in my backyard too. Just FYI, folks know I got my I'm gonna have my own personal one. Um, and I and I guess lastly. And then the international ones, one in London, the, the, the UK, and for, right, right. you know all of. Uh, there's a thousand in Japan if you need to find mm-hmm. one here in Japan. But uh, uh, what does Marugame mean? So Marugame is a place, a mm-hmm. Sunuki style udon started in Shokuku Island in the Kagawa Prefecture, and so you know it's kind of like we we say Tex Mex here as a qualifier to Mexican food. Uh. They say yeah, maragami yeah. udon is a quiet food. So it so helps people understand the type of udon. That they, when you say maragami udon in Japan, they know, well, that's Sanuki style udon. Got it. So it's like Chicago style hot dog, Chicago style pizza. There you go. I've learned so much, you know, about udon, um, about udon culture, where it comes from. I, I, my, I'm going to destroy the rest of this bowl um, when we get off. But I, thank you all for, for coming in here. Appreciate you, Chef. Appreciate you, brother, for coming in here. Thank you, and, uh, thank you so uh, much. Blessing the folks uh, with newfound knowledge of udon and delicious things. Nom, 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 nom. Um, and so we're not going <laughs> to leave anybody out. The reason that I've, I forced them to tell you where their restaurants are is because, um, listeners, uh, I'm giving you some free margame stuff. You know what I'm saying? When you go up to the restaurants, you know, you get a free piece of any tempura except the harumaki. Because you can't have that one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So don't ask. All right? We don't Except the harumaki. <laughs> what is harumaki? <laughs> harumaki is like Japanese breakfast, like burrito style. It's a deep fried, it's like a deep fried egg roll with spam and egg, right? Yeah. Green onion, Green and, onion cheese. and cheese. I mean, maybe you should throw that one in there too. I mean, why not? This go on, go on. No, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> so anyway, you get a free piece of any tempura except the delicious, the most delicious one that he just said. You got to pay double for that one, actually. If you use this, they're going to make you pay double for that one. Uh, with the purchase of Udon uh, through August 4th uh, for any online order. Okay, so any online mm-hmm. order through August 4th, you get a free piece of any tempura on me. On Lupe, you know what I'm saying? Right. On me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So check it out. Um, just type Lupe when you go to pay. Okay, so make sure you type L-U-P-E, uh, all caps, when you go to pay and you get a free piece of any tempura through August 4th. Um, so yeah, man, any closing statements? We're going to get up out of here. I'll, I'll leave the last word to you, brothers. 
Evin Chef, arigato. Arigato today. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lupe. Thank you. We appreciate it.